Hello, everyone, and welcome or welcome back to A Better You Podcast. I am your host, Fernanda Ramirez, and welcome back to another episode. I am so excited to be filming this episode today because I have felt like It has been seven years since I filmed the last episode, and you may be wondering why, but that is because actually two weeks ago now, I filmed two episodes to pre-record while I was going to be away on vacation or I guess on a work trip, kind of. Um, So I haven't filmed a podcast episode in like two weeks, but hello, welcome, I'm back. I'm actually filming this at 10 p.m., and so if you're watching the video version of this podcast, you may see that it's very dark around me. I have the mood lighting on. Little reminder there, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel for A Better You, I highly recommend you do so so you can watch me talk in person. You can see my in-person reactions. But anyways, I'm so excited for today's episode. This past week and a half, I was at Coachella and then I was in LA for a week. It actually ended up being much longer than I anticipated just because I had to extend my flight and all of these reasons, but we'll get into that in a second. Before we get into today's episode, I want to talk about the title. This episode is going to be about how to feel your best from the inside and out. Basically, how I get myself back on track after a trip, because this is what I'm going to be doing for the next week, getting back into routine after my little vacay trip that I had. And it's everything that I do to make me feel my best, because I feel like Even though this isn't a part of the job description of being a YouTuber or an influencer or whatever it is, I feel like I always have trips coming up where I know I'm going to be in front of a camera, where I know I'm going to have to take a lot of photos, where I'm going to have to be on my best A game because I'm going to be interacting a lot, I'm going to be just doing a lot where I know I need to feel my best. And for me, that means eating healthy, working out, taking care of my skin, taking care of my mental health, just being the best version of myself internally, therefore externally, so I can show up my best self in all of these situations so yeah this is going to be my little guide on how I get back on track and this doesn't necessarily have to be after a trip this could work for you if you haven't had a routine and you just want to get on a routine or if you've kind of fallen off your workout grind or you've fallen off the eating healthy grind or you just haven't been on track with your routine I'm going to have lots of personal examples for how I do this for myself and I'll also have some tips and tricks to give to you guys to romanticize this health era of your life whether that be you're trying to romanticize a new morning routine a new night routine you're trying to get more into hobbies or trying to have a more structured work routine it's going to be all of that but before we get into this episode I must tell you because I don't want to catfish you guys I don't want to just clickbait you half of this episode or at least this first beginning half I really want to go into depth on my experience with Coachella and my week in LA because I feel like I have so many story times of what happened and I know a lot of you guys are very curious about that experience. I honestly think they're really funny stories and it kind of gives you a little bit of an insight on the influencer life. But if you're not into that, you just want to skip ahead to the topic of today's video, I'll leave a timestamp right now and I'll put it on the screen. Before we get into everything, if you aren't already subscribed to the podcast, whether this be on YouTube or on Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcast, please make sure you do so. If you haven't given it a rate, I would highly appreciate it if you did. And if you haven't given it a review, that would be amazing if you did so because it warms my heart reading the reviews and it means so much to me. So please make sure you do so and let's get on into it. So Coachella, the Influencer Olympics, as some like to call it. This event was a week and a half ago and this is my second year going to Coachella. So I am still a rookie, but a little bit more experienced than I was the year before. Last year, I went with a brand and it was so much fun. I stayed in a little influencer house, which was very different for me because it was my first influencer house moment. I don't necessarily think that these people like this title, but I did go with TikTokers and I say that in quotations because obviously they're much more than that, but that's a big part of what they're known for. It was so fun staying in a house, seeing everybody record their content, everybody taking pictures. It was kind of like the ideal setting for me because that's what I love to do, but I would do it like at home in Vancouver in my own house with nobody else around to witness it or for me to witness so for me to go to a house where it was like influencer heavy and that was the job it was so fun and you know I was there for work basically because I did go with a brand and the way it works is that a lot of brands sponsor them to go to Coachella. They'll dress them for the three days or they'll put them in a house and they have certain deliverables that they need to post and like 
in return they may get their tickets for free or they may get their stay for free or technically it's not for free because they're doing work for it but you kind of get the hint they're doing a collaboration together and a lot of brands do this for Coachella so because of this I feel like a lot of influencers have started going to the festival and it's honestly probably changed a little bit of what it used to be and of course I never went to the festival back in the day but I definitely think that now a lot of influencers go to like see other influencers or they're trying to be at the coolest parties or they're trying to pick the coolest outfit Fits, they're getting stylists they're getting makeup artists they're getting hairstylists like they're doing the most to get their content and also I've heard and I've witnessed it myself engagement is crazy over that weekend because everybody's on their phone seeing who's posting what what outfits everyone's wearing they want to rate other people's looks like it's just a big weekend for content so I get why influencers go and I also get why the normal music lover that goes to Coachella is probably really annoyed by the over saturation of influencers but anyways I am not one to judge because I am one of them but this year I actually didn't go with a brand I went with a few friends, most of them being influencers, and then I went with one of my friends from home, her name is Shaylee. She's not an influencer, but she's like my close friend, and she gets it, she's been my friend for a long time, so she knows what it's like for me to take all these photos and film these videos, and so she was totally fine with it, but I did do a brand deal while I was at Coachella, which was super fun. But anyways, my little summary of how Coachella was, was that it was super fun, I had such a great time. During Coachella, it is a little bit hard when there's so many like events, I guess like for influencers, because you kind of want to go to them all maybe you said yes that you would go to some and like you want to attend all of them because they're all going to be so fun and cool but it's really hard when it's like blazing hot the uber situation is such a pain everything is so expensive that weekend like if you want to get an uber it will charge you like a hundred dollars and take like an hour when it should just be like a 20 minute ride i also find that it's so hard to see all the artists perform and this is for everybody not just influencers but there's so many good artists performing at similar times and the coachella ground are just so big that it's so hard to reach all the different stages and also oh my god I probably took 25,000 steps for each day that I was there my feet were blistering I burnt my scalp I literally had like bruises on my collarbones from how tight my shirt was for some reason my throat was hurting from all the dust that I was inhaling I was probably dehydrated I overall was just exhausted I think I had like four hours of sleep every night obviously I'm not complaining because Coachella is so fun and I'm so grateful to be there but it is very tiring on your body but other than that I mean I had a blast I met so many cool people I had so much fun dressing up I had so much fun taking pictures I had so much fun listening to the music I think one of my favorite artists that I saw was Willow um she plays the song meet me at your spot and like wait a minute which are both really iconic songs and she was like an incredible performer I also saw Blackpink which is like a really good girl k-pop band i'm sure you guys all know them i don't really know why i'm explaining it in depth but i saw bad bunny i saw some edm artists i went to this festival called neon carnival which was like an after hours coachella thing it was like from 12 to 4 a.m literally didn't get home till 5 that night but like yeah just so many crazy experiences and i'm so glad i like filmed it all i will say i tried to bring my camera because i know a lot of you guys watch my youtube channel and let me just say i almost got it confiscated on the first day that i went to coachella because apparently you're not supposed to have a dslr camera with an attachable lens because it's considered a professional camera so i almost got it confiscated which was an l and then i didn't want to bring it the next two days because i did not want that to happen again so i vlogged a lot on my phone and stuff but yeah that was a learning lesson if you go to coachella next year make sure you have like little canon g7x or something because they will take away your big camera anyways that was my little coachella experience and then basically the following week i had some really exciting events in la so i stayed in la the entire week and that whole entire week i met so many cool people i stayed with another friend of mine sarita she is from new york and she is a latina instagram tiktok girly and it was such a coincidence and it felt very meant to be because basically the day that i was supposed to get home from coachella my ride ended up not working out and her ride ended up not working out so we joined forces and we took an uber home all the way from palm springs to la and we just booked a hotel together with shaylee and so we stayed there for the week and i did all all the LA girly things. I went to Air One, 
I purchased the $20 smoothie. We went to this cafe called Dialogue. That's a top fave of mine. I got a whole lot of sweet green. Basically did all the things that I can't do when I'm in Vancouver. And we even worked out at the Aloe headquarters, which, which was literally a dream of mine. And I have been wanting to work out there for so long just because I always see all these influencers go there. And it was so cool to be able to do it in person. But finally, I had my event that I was looking forward to that week. And let me tell you about it. So I had gotten invited to the Daily Front Row Fashion LA Awards and their lunch that they had. And the Daily Front Row, if you don't know what it is, it is like a magazine. It's I think it's based in New York and it's really big in fashion. They usually have like fashion parties. They obviously have a lot of celebrities on their magazines and it's just like a big magazine it's a big brand so the fact that I got invited to their awards I was so excited for I was so grateful for and then I got invited to their lunch as well which was like a super intimate little pre-award event and it was so fun I honestly felt a little bit scared because I have never been to like an intimate lunch like this before and although it is like a super fun experience it also is a very good opportunity to network and I feel like obviously you guys know I do content creation and I talk about all this stuff about like how to help you guys and like how to be my best self but I feel like a whole other part to this job in my eyes is the behind the scenes stuff like going to these events networking with maybe the brands or people in the back end of things, meeting photographers, meeting people that run these magazines, meeting people in the fashion industry, making connections, growing your network, working on your social skills. And like that is a whole other section in my eyes to this, I guess, like industry that is off cameras because I can't necessarily take a camera with me without looking just like really weird. Like obviously if you're in a social setting, you can't just hold your camera around so in those types of situations I try to be really present and really focus in on my communication skills and my literally networking like tell me why I've said that like four times in the past sentence but that is a skill that I love to work on and I love to practice as you know I love socializing so anyways I went to this event and I was so excited I met so many cool people and a lot of people that were working for this magazine and I just had such a good time I felt so grateful to be there it was at the Four Seasons Hotel in Beverly Hills which just felt so fancy to even be there and then on the Sunday the awards happened and I even got my first makeup artist which I've never invested in just because I always find that I can do my own makeup but I've learned that sometimes when you get professional photos taken of you doing your own makeup can quickly backfire and it does not look good on camera um so yeah, I got a makeup artist and I felt so confident in my makeup. I felt so good. I love the dress that I was wearing and the event was held at the Beverly Hills Hotel. So I felt super fancy going there. And honestly, this is a little fangirl moment for me. This was on my vision board to be invited to these like events or to go to these lunches and to be in front of the camera and to get a makeup artist and to just dress up. Like honestly, this was like one of my... Um, manifestations and I don't really know why because it's not necessarily like it's a goal that you achieved it was, it was just a cool experience and I really wanted to experience so I felt super happy to be there and I'm just obsessed with the fact that you guys have if you watch my YouTube channel have followed along with me for so long that a lot of you guys messaged me and were saying like I love that we got to see you in your childhood bedroom at your parents home and now we see you like on the red carpet and doing all this stuff like it's just so cool to me that you guys saw the back end of it and you guys just didn't see me all of a sudden on the red carpet like you guys saw you guys saw me as a little a little baby child wishing that I would do these things so now that I can do these things I just feel so grateful but Oh my god, I'm gonna be real here, okay? It is a little bit humbling to enter these like super fancy parties, events when everyone is so like put together, everybody is so perfect looking and you're just a little girl or you feel like a little girl. When you see a celebrity and they look perfect, just remember and just know that they have a full team behind them. They have a hairstylist, they have a makeup stylist, they have a literal stylist for their outfit. Like they got somebody else to pick it for them. And all of these things are extremely expensive. Like a stylist can be upwards of $1,000. A makeup artist could charge you $800 for a makeup look. A hairstylist can be like $500. Like they are paying so much money to look the way they do. And on top of that, a lot of their jobs, because a lot of them are models, is to keep this image of themselves. And they work out a lot. They have a strict diet. They have their assistant taking care of them. They have someone getting them food. They have a driver. Like they have a full team behind them. And they've been going to these events for years or they have just so much practice being in front of a camera that when you look at these people, 
just keep in mind that that's the case. Keep in mind that it's not necessarily relatable and that it's a lot of practice and a lot of discipline and a lot of money and just a lot of work that gets them to look the way they do and for them to be in the places that they are. So having that said, I did get a makeup artist this this time, so I was super excited about that, but I did pick my own outfit and I did do my own hair and I didn't have an assistant and I did everything else on my own. And to be honest, I'm pretty proud of how I did. Like, I feel like I did fine, but it is hard to be in those environments when everybody looks stunning, drop dead gorgeous. They have amazing, expensive designer outfits. And I pulled up in an outfit that I had brought from home, which is fine. We love trying to achieve everything on our own, but um, let me set the scene for you. I Uber to this Beverly Hills hotel. I'm in my outfit. I'm telling myself, you're the sexiest girl ever. You are so gorgeous. You are so beautiful. You are so hot. You're that bitch. You're so confident. And I'm sorry that maybe that sounds a little bit arrogant, but literally when I'm going to these events and I'm going to be around a lot of people that are super successful and I feel like a lot of people in my case, like, and I've heard this before, so I'm not just pulling this out, but a lot of people get imposter syndrome and I don't really think I struggle with that. And the only reason why is because I am constantly in my head telling me like, you deserve to be here. You are confident. You are good at socializing. People want to talk to you. You are successful. Like I am in my ear telling myself that. But sometimes when you get there, it's a little hard to ignore the feelings of like doubt or insecurity. But anyways, Okay, I get to this event, right? I am I even ordered an Uber Black so I could be extra fancy, okay? And I'm telling you guys the truth. I'm being authentic and honest here. But I get myself an Uber Black and I get to this event and I step out the car on my lonesome because I have no assistant and I got nobody with me. I got no plus one, okay? So I step out my car and I see my publicist and I'm like hey girl like I'm in my dress I'm in my heels she's like oh we have to go down this way I'm gonna show you where everybody is and we go down these stairs it is this beautiful staircase in this expensive hotel there's all these fancy people behind me and I literally slip down the stairs I fall down the stairs when I tell you everybody around me gasped I felt ashamed. I felt embarrassed. I was like, Fernanda, please, you can't embarrass yourself just yet. You've been here for 30 seconds. So that was embarrassing. But anyways, we get in, okay? I'm looking around. Everybody looks drop-dead gorgeous. Like, when I mean drop-dead gorgeous, I mean literally Kim Kardashian is in the building. Miley Cyrus is in the building. All the influencers and the models and the celebrities from, like, reality TV shows, they're all there. So I'm like, holy, this is maybe humbling, Fernanda, get it together. Keep your peace. So then I go to the, I think it's called a step and step and something. I honestly don't even know the name of it, but it's where you do the red carpet and you get all your photos taken. And this is like Getty images. There's a bunch of photographers and there's a lot of celebrities. I feel like I've watched Keeping Up with the Kardashians and I'm just thinking about Khloe Kardashian. She always says that she hates doing the red carpet. She hates being in front of the camera and it's super nerve wracking. Now, I was a little bit anxious, but I'm more anxious because I'm scared that the photo won't turn out good, but I'm not anxious to be in front of the camera. In fact, I actually love being in front of the camera and Loki, one of my favorite things to do. So like, I was excited to go on this red carpet. I was ready for it. I was like, Fernanda, you're gonna pull out your sexiest poses and you're gonna get a good photo, okay? So I get on the red carpet. Immediately, the photographers are like, look this way, look this way. Can we get a look to your shoulder? And I felt like a bad bitch, not gonna lie. (laughs) It was was kind of an ego boost. I felt great. And so I'm posing, I'm getting these photos. I'm just praying to God that they turn out good. And I get to the end of the red carpet. And the photographer looks at me and he goes, who are you wearing? Thinking that I'm gonna say this designer, right? thinking that I'm going to say Louis Vuitton or Givenchy as the rest of the people behind me do. But no, first of all, let me tell you, my dress was from Waif, which I think is like like a good brand. It's like pretty expensive, but it's sold at like Nordstrom or like Bloomingdale's. Okay. It's no designer, but it's still a beautiful dress. And like, you know, it fit really nice. But he asked me, who are you wearing? And quietly I say, Wayfair? Do you realize what Wayfair is? Like Wayfair is a furniture store online that is literally said to be controversial that like maybe traffics children. Like it is a controversial store. And he goes, what was that? And I said, Wayfair? And he literally looked away. The rest of the photographers looked away. They did not say a single word to me. And then I look down at myself and I think, Fernanda, did you just say what I think you just said? And I realized I said Wayfair instead of Waif. Like not only did I not say the name, I said a completely different thing. They gave me zero time a day and I could not get that embarrassment 
out of my mind for the next like hour that I was at this little cocktail pre before the awards so that was super embarrassing that was super humbling but I'm telling you guys because even me when you see the pictures I post just know that there was some embarrassing moments that took place there but you know what we live and we learn we learn for next time and you know what they would you, you know take the L and move on the rest of the night was good I met up with some girls that I had previously met in LA I had some wine I got a seat they did the awards I saw Gwyneth Paltrow in person I feel like she's pretty controversial but let me tell you she looked glowing uh, I saw Kim Kardashian I saw Northwest I saw Chris Appleton I saw Miley Cyrus which was crazy I saw La Roche which is Zendaya's stylist and yeah there was just like so many celebrities there it was super fun I took great pictures if you guys want to go to my Instagram, Fernando Ramirez, the two A's in my last name, check it out. And yeah, that was a really long-winded story of my weekend, but like I had a really good time in LA. I feel like I met some really great people. I made some really great connections. I had some really good learning lessons and I had a lot of fun. But anyways, I came back today, a week and a half later, and I feel a little bit distraught. I feel like, girl, you came back, first of all, with a sty on your eye. Second of all, you have been eating sweet green for the past seven days in a row because tell me why the U.S. does not have healthy food options. Like, I swear to God, they have like In-N-Out and Canes and Chick-fil-A and just burgers on burgers, but they don't have like salad bars. Anyways, I came back and I was like, girl, you need to eat something healthy. I have not had good sleep. I have kind of been having the weirdest skincare routine because I forgot half my products at home. And also, I forgot my contact lenses in Vancouver. The entire trip. Sorry, I have to add this in there. But I forgot my contact lenses at home. Tell me how I'm going to go to a music festival and how I'm going to these awards with no contact lenses. I literally had to ask my friend if I could borrow her contact lenses, even though they were the wrong prescription, just so that I wouldn't go to these events and just embarrass myself. Moral of the story is I came home, I feel a little bit wrecked, and I'm going to get back on my routine to recoup and recover from the week and a half that I was on this little vacay slash work trip. And I say work very loosely because I love what I do, but... It is a little bit tiring and at the end of the day, it is for work. But anyways, like I said earlier in the beginning of this episode, I have a lot of moments like when I come back from fashion week, when I come back from a trip like this and I just need to get back on track. I'm going to tell you guys everything that I do and what I'm going to do this week to feel my best. So let's get on into it. Starting off with number one, what I'm going to do. I have my computer here and I made a little diagram about all the topics I'm going to talk about. And that includes my fitness, my diet, my morning and night routine, my work routine and the things I do to have fun and to gain some serotonin back. And one more thing I want to mention is that a lot of these things I'm going to talk about, I always show in my YouTube videos, but they're pretty sporadic. So I feel like having a podcast episode dedicated to this topic and just having everything in one place would be really interesting to listen to. And also maybe a lot of the podcast listeners that don't watch my YouTube channel would like to hear about these things that they haven't heard me say already. But starting off with number one, fitness. If you know anything about me, you would know that I love working out. I love attending workout classes and I'm super passionate about doing yoga and just overall staying really fit with my body. I would say the reason for this is because I did gymnastics for so many years and then I did cheer after that, that honestly being fit and staying healthy and on top of my workout routine feels more normal to me than slacking off. Like it's just what I've grown accustomed to and whenever I don't, work out I just end up feeling bad about myself because not only is it not giving me the serotonin that I love and that I need and not only is it making me feel weak which is something that I'm not used to feeling like I said because I have been so active for so long but also I start to feel more sluggish I start to feel like I just have extra maybe retained like water weight I just don't feel my best I don't feel snatched and I want to feel snatched and like I said I'm in front of a camera a lot and so I just want to feel and look my best. So in order for me to do that, I love to work out. I work out probably, or at least I aim to work out like four times a week. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. But my favorite forms of exercise is weightlifting and doing yoga, as well as Pilates. But I'm going to give yoga the upper hand here just because I've done it for longer. One thing I want to say is that you guys are always asking me for my workout routine. And it's hard for me to just give it to you because I always am doing something different but I love doing cycling classes I love doing weightlifting classes 
I love doing yoga, specifically vinyasa or power yoga. Even hot yoga is great because it makes you sweat out all of the alcohol if you're drinking or just extra water that you're retaining, kind of get all the sodium out. Like it just really makes you sweat it all out. Um, and I also love just going to the gym myself and doing some like free weights and doing the 12 3 30, which is the Lauren Giraldo workout, which is when you go on the treadmill at an incline of 12 at a speed of three and for 30 minutes. So I love doing that. And I just kind of alternate throughout the week. I do live in Vancouver, which is a very like health conscious city. It's a very active city. And honestly, I feel like a big reason for why I am so active is because I live here because that's just what the culture is. I feel like everybody's working out. Everybody's planning their next workout class or walking to where they need to go or taking their bike out or playing tennis. Like people are always just very active. So if you are from Vancouver and you're looking for some new workout classes or workout places to try, I highly recommend House Concepts. That is one of my favorite gyms. They have great classes there and the instructors there are so great. It feels like a community. Like sometimes I'll literally book workout classes there just so that I can feel like I'm in that community. And I highly recommend also doing this if you're trying to make friends in your 20s. As you know, a big tip for making friends in your 20s that I feel like you can find literally anywhere is join hobbies or do hobbies or join classes with people that have a similar interest of you because you can make friends with them really easily. And for me, that's finding friends that like to work out or like to be in their little wellness era because that's what I like too. And I feel like we have a lot in common doing that. So if you're looking for friends and you're in a new city or you're just in your 20s, I would highly recommend workout gyms, especially ones that are like clubs because people go there so often. Another one is Equinox. I love going to Equinox. It is really expensive, but I mean, if you have the money, and you want to it's a great experience i also love oxygen yoga i love jaybird the yoga bar those are a few of my favorites some workout tips that i can give you if you want to get in the habit of working out would just be to really do the research on your health i feel like sometimes i don't want to get in the habit of doing something but when i read the science to it and when i read the facts about how it's going to help my internal being things that i cannot physically see like my cardiovascular health or my heart health or maybe balancing your hormones or your moods those things really make me more motivated to work out as well as like i said obviously these are superficial reasons but if you want to look your best obviously working out getting a sweat in will not hurt a tip that I can say for if you want to get consistent is to just make it a goal to just go once a week and then maybe after doing that for two weeks go twice a week and then maybe up it a little bit more just keep upping it little by little and trust me once you go quite consistently it's not going to be about finding the motivation to go it's going to be that you're going to realize and feel the effects it's doing to you and how it's impacting your body like you're going to feel better you're going to wake up with more energy you're going to feel happier you're going to feel more motivated and you're going to want to go to the gym again you're not going to want to sit at home and eat another bag of chips like you're going to want to do that and so i would just say little by little incorporate it into your schedule and you're going to want to continue going Another tip would be to find a workout that you love and that you enjoy doing that doesn't necessarily feel like a hassle to get there. For example, I hate running. I You will not catch me dead at a Barry's class. I'm sorry, but I hate running. But I do love yoga and I will go to yoga for fun, not just because it's a good workout for you, but because I genuinely enjoy it. Another thing is that if you start to really like it, you can set little goals for yourself to be better at that thing, to not just show up and do the bare minimum, but to actually improve and to make it a skill of yours. And also, I feel like a lot of people sometimes are worried about whether or not they're interesting or not, or whether or not they are confident enough. And I think a big thing that has helped me is when you become really good at a skill or really good at a hobby or you do something consistently, you become really proud of yourself for that. And you're proud to tell people that not only did you do yoga once, but you consistently do yoga. You're good at yoga. It is something that you're passionate about and it's a hobby of yours. That's an example, but I'm trying to tell you that if one of these things really sticks to you and clings on to you, not only is it good for your physical health, but it's good for your mental health and it feels good to tell other people that that's something that you do. Okay, moving on from fitness because we've talked a little bit about that. The next thing that I'm going to do to get back on track is work on my health. Now, when I'm on a trip and I'm away, I'm not going to restrict. I'm not a restrictor. I love to eat. I will eat all the foods. 
But I have been very intuitive with my eating and and I've been very careful about what I put in my body because I realized that when I was eating everything, it was making my stomach hurt and bloat every day. Like I had to sit back and be like, girl, why is your stomach hurting every day? This isn't normal. And I realized that there was certain foods that just didn't sit well with me. And for me, that was like dairy or eating foods with a lot of sodium. For you, I would say do a little revision on your diet, figure out what works and what doesn't. And if you realize that there's a food that does not work with your body, try your best to eliminate it or cut it out, even if it's your favorite food. Like for example, I've had to give up eating pasta and like Italian food because it just does not sit well. And as much as I want to eat it and I want to be like, yeah, maybe just ignore the fact that it hurts my body. It's just not worth it for me anymore. It makes me feel like shit, honestly. And I want to prioritize feeling good and feeling confident in my body. I don't want to be in pain. So I would definitely say for diet and stuff, I try to avoid things that I know make me feel sick. And when I come home from a trip after I feel like I've just been eating out a lot, I like doing a little cleanse where I don't order food, I don't eat out, and I just do a lot of cooking at home. If you're wondering what some of my favorite meals to make are, which I know a lot of you guys ask me this all the time, I love to get a lot of protein in by eating chicken and salmon. If you don't have an air fryer, I highly recommend getting one because it makes cooking so much easier and I literally avoided cooking meat for like a year while living alone because I just hate cooking raw meat. But something about cooking meat in an air fryer is just so much easier so much faster and so much tastier. I also love having eggs in the morning. I love having Greek yogurt that has a lot of probiotics and it's very good for you, especially if you're a woman listening to this. Also having fruits and vegetables. Some of my favorite of mine are blueberries. They're super high in antioxidants and they're considered a superfood, which is great. I also love having smoothies in particular ones with bananas, which are super good for absorbing sodium in your body and also they have a lot of fiber. I love putting dates in my smoothies, which has a lot of natural sugar in it. They make the consistency of smoothies just so good and tasty and I just love it. And also I just snack on dates like all day. And I love having greens powder. I know a lot of people are like annoyed by influencers promoting greens powders on their TikTok, but I will say this non-sponsored, greens powders has honestly... It has changed the game for me. It makes me de-bloat. It tastes so good in my smoothies. And the one that I particularly love is the Matcha Greens Blends by Teamy. I think there's like 27 superfood like greens in there. And you just get so many of your vegetables and you don't even taste it because it's in a powder. So I highly recommend that. So good in smoothies. As well as like for dinners and lunch, I love making just like steamed vegetables. I think bok choy is delicious. Asparagus is delicious arugula is delicious i'm really just going off with all my favorite foods but i also love snacking on almonds yeah i feel like those are all my favorite foods basically those all make me feel good they don't make my stomach hurt and i know that they are doing actually good things in my body rather than just like going in and out with literally no benefit another thing that i want to say is drinking a lot of water something that i've noticed especially while being in front of a camera a lot is that drinking a lot of water helps with depuffing your face because it just washes everything out so i highly recommend drinking a lot of water the two liters a day you guys already know this it's like a basic tip but i'm just putting it in there because that's what's going to make me feel good and if you get one of those huge water bottles with the little like scripture on them saying 9 a.m drink this much water 10 a.m drink this much water 11 a.m and then you kind of drink it throughout the day those are super helpful and if you want to be a little aesthetic girly those huge stanley cups that are literally like a hundred dollars they're so aesthetic they're going viral if you want to buy one of those and spend the money on it why not do it if it's gonna make you drink water i would do it i literally bought a knockoff one but it still works wonders for me Another thing that I like to do when I come back from a trip and to just kind of get back on my health grind is take a lot of vitamins. Um, I love taking gummy vitamins. The ones that I take are like biotin, which is good for your hair, skin, and nails. Um, Also, apple cider ones help with deep loading a lot for me. Consult with your doctors and see what vitamins you need to take if you do so or if you have any deficiencies because that's going to make you feel so much better. Moving on, we're going to go into the morning routine and the night routine. I wanted to talk about these both because I feel like when I get back from a trip, I just want to get back into routine. When I'm away, I'm just doing whatever, whenever, with no routine and with no consequences in sight. I'm living on vacation mode. But when I'm back, I know that having a routine is going to make me 
feel my best. I'm going to tell you guys my non-negotiables and I'm going to tell you what a morning in Fernanda's life looks like. So I wake up, I check my phone, as most do. I'm sorry, I had to say it. If you want to be the best ever and just have bragging rights for life, don't use your phone in the morning, but I do. But anyways, I wake up usually around like 8.30. I immediately open my blinds. If you don't do this, you need to start doing this. I hope you do this. Opening your blinds literally makes all the difference. Let's in the sun in and it lets your circadian rhythm feel so sciencey here, but it lets your inner rhythm know that it's morning and you're going to feel energized and awake for the day. I go to my bathroom and I do the skincare routine. I think some non-negotiables here are cleansing your face, putting on some moisturizer, I'll put on some eye cream, maybe I'll do a serum. We'll go in with the SPF, okay? If you do not have a skincare routine, please, for the love of God, prioritize your skin. I know that some people may be really busy. They do not have time for the skincare routine. They do not care to have a skincare routine. They just don't want to invest in the products. I get it. I feel like the bare minimum routine that you can do is like a cleanser, a moisturizer, and SPF. It will make you feel so luxurious first thing in the morning because you're taking time out of your day to really take care of yourself. And not only that, but you're going to just have glowing skin. I feel like there's a big difference between having skin that doesn't have acne, which if you don't do anything and you don't have acne or any skin problems, you're blessed on its own. But there's a difference between having clear skin and having glowing skin. And if you want to feel elevated and confident in your skin, whether that be without makeup or you want your makeup to sit on your face flawlessly, taking care of your skin is so important and it's it's a non-negotiable for me. So I highly recommend doing that. We do not want to have wrinkles when we're older and and we do not want to have skin spots or skin cancer and I feel like that's such a underrated thing like it's one thing to not have acne and all that but like we do not want to have wrinkles when we're older at least I don't and I know that Botox and all those types of treatments is so popular right now but if you can prevent even getting those procedures by just taking care of your skin that's going to go a long way also I just want to add in I feel like we're so blessed this younger generation that we know about all these skin tips because the older generation did not do this when they were younger they didn't have TikTok they didn't have podcasts they did not have YouTube to learn about this stuff but we do so take advantage of it now the next thing is I go drink some water I take my vitamins and I love ice rolling and gua shaing my face now this is definitely a luxury I will say when it comes to self-care and all that kind of stuff I'm not going to ignore the fact that I do have the privilege of working from home I do have the privilege of having the time to decide when I want to work so I get that maybe not everybody has the time but if you do have the time I am obsessed with ice rolling and gua shaing and again I'm super paranoid and I hate when my face is puffy so I love taking the time to ice roll my face and just let the puffing go down and then gua shaing which if you don't know what that is it is using that little stainless steel or rose quartz tool on your face to kind of give yourself a massage with some oil and do some lymphatic drainage to give you a little bit of insight on this if you don't already know about it doing a lymphatic drainage massage which is what you're doing when you're gua shaing your face it relieves any swelling that you have by helping the lymph move to an area with working lymph vessels not only that but gua sha helps promote blood flow to the areas being scraped which can help reduce pain and stiffness so yeah that was a little definition from google i did not make that up now that's basically my morning routine that i always do but just to add in there i usually eat my breakfast around 12 i'll have some protein some healthy fats some fruits and I'll have coffee after that so that I've already eaten first. So that's my little morning routine. That makes me feel good. That is great for me. I love it. I also usually work out in the morning. And if I'm doing a really heavy workout, I'll have like a banana before. As for the night routine, it's almost just as important as the day routine, but... I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I definitely don't prioritize my night routine as much as I prioritize my day routine, which is my own fault. I should not be doing that. But honestly, my night routine kind of just consists of like doing my skincare and going to bed. But I wanted to give you guys some examples of what you could do to romanticize your night routine and to make it feel like more of a whole event rather than just slipping into your bed. Because I've definitely been there where I stay up way too late, I'm doing my work, it's like two in the morning and there's stuff on my bed and I don't even move it, I'll just like slide in there. And that is honestly the worst feeling ever. So let me tell you, 
One of the things that you could do is take a bath with like Epsom salts, which is super good for relieving pain. And if you're an athlete or you do a lot of working out, this is great for you. You feel relaxed. You can read a book. You can light a candle. You can have some aromatherapy going. You can even get some fresh eucalyptus and put it in your shower so that when you're having a shower, the steam of the eucalyptus just makes your bath a whole aromic experience, okay? Another thing that you can do is wear a silk set of pajamas or just really romanticize your going to sleep outfit whether that be a cute little brand new melville pj set or like i said a little silk set whatever it may be even a little like sleep dress kind of cute kind of sexy whatever you want okay then once you're in bed if you want to invest in having some nice sheets, I think that's great. I personally love my linen sheets from Parachute, but I know that silk sheets are also great. One thing that I will say that I actually do do this is I'm trying to be better with my hair health. And in order to do this, I love oiling my hair at night, whether that be with rosemary oil, or I think The Ordinary has a really good hair oil that... I'm not sure what it's called, but I'm sure you can search it up if you just search up The Ordinary. And I put on my silk cap and just kind of let the oil sit in my hair overnight. And it's really good for your hair health. It makes your hair a lot shinier, grow faster. And when you have it in a silk cap, you wake up with like super flawless hair. Another thing that I don't do, but I know you could do to romanticize the night routine is having some sort of like magnesium spray, but just some sort of sleepy vibe if you want to go to bed easier. And last thing, I do do this, but I love falling asleep with frequency music. It sounds kind of like spa music if you've ever heard it, but it's frequency music that basically vibrates on a certain frequency. I think it's actually called frequency healing music, but you can listen to a whole bunch of different ones. You can search this up on Spotify. There's so many different playlists that you can click, but I always put like a 30 minute timer and then I just fall asleep to that. If you like white noise to listen to or like bedtime stories, there are so many apps that you can listen to. A few other things that I think that you can do in your night routine is moisturizing your whole body, whether that be with lotion or with baby oil. That just makes you feel so good and you'll wake up looking flawless. You can also use a humidifier. I did this a lot in the winter and it made my breathing just so good and I felt so moisturized in the morning because I get eczema really bad in the winter if you're into meditating at night I think that's a great idea usually I prefer to meditate in the mornings if I do meditate but if you want to do it before bed I think that can be great and probably put you in a really sleepy headspace you can even do like a little quick cleanup of your bedroom with like a 15 minute timer and do that every single night so that you wake up with a clean room you can even do some journaling I think that journaling at night is my favorite time because it's just a great time to unwind whether that be just doing a little diary entry about how your day went or doing a little journal prompt that you find on Pinterest or it can be just writing down your gratitude like what went well that day what went bad what you want to improve I'm obsessed with having a little journal beside my bed and just spilling some brain dump at the end of the day so now you know after a trip what I kind of do to get back on my morning routine my night routine my fitness routine my health routine what else is there left you may be wondering but I'm gonna tell you the next thing is my work routine this is different for every single person and I know that I'm in a very specific situation because not everybody's a YouTuber not everybody is a podcast host not everybody is an influencer not everybody works from home but for me whenever I'm at a trip I feel like I don't get the best out of my work I feel like I just can't focus I'm ignoring emails I'm ignoring text messages and it honestly just makes me feel really bad about myself because I'm not on top of my work and that does not make me feel confident it makes me feel avoidant which we do not like I know that when I'm getting back from a trip which literally was two days ago I am taking the next few days to prioritize my work I'm not making social plans and I'm gonna sit at my desk and get everything I need to do done to give you proof of this I literally had a brand like day trip today and I had to cancel it because I had so much work to do I had this podcast to film and I had to take the hit couldn't go to this trip which I was honestly devastated about but anyways here we are so usually I know that for me working in the morning is what does it for me that's usually my best time of day to work so I'll sit at my desk at 9 a.m and I'll just start with doing my emails I even love going on notion and planning out my week or my day or my planner and just kind of updating everything do all the little maintenance things and just getting back into routine getting in the hang of it a lot of people say this but a lot of times when you're neglecting a lot of your work you think about doing the easiest tasks first but honestly getting through the hardest tasks first is actually so much more beneficial for you because 
because that's the stuff that you're putting off and just getting that done is going to make you feel so much more confident going into the rest of your work. And last but certainly not least, after all my work is done, after my health is done, after I've finished taking care of my mental health, myself, my little bubble, my apartment, my routines, I have to take care of the social little butterfly inside of me. And so I make plans for the weekend and you already know I'm excited for this weekend to come because I miss my friends and after being away from them from so long, I miss seeing them, I miss my family. Make sure that you pour into your social cup because that is just as important as making sure that you are well on your own. And whenever you are trying to get your life back on track, I feel like sometimes we can get into this mindset that we need to be in our healing era, we need to focus on me, we need to grind on ourselves and block everyone out, but humans need connection. And I think it's important to not only be around other people for your own well-being, but to make sure that you are keeping and building and nurturing those relationships for the other people, because you don't want the other people in your life, your loved ones, your friends, your family to feel like you aren't prioritizing them either. Like you do not want them to think, oh, she is just on her workout grind, her health grind, and she completely forgot about us. You know, you wanna be checking in on them, asking them how they're doing, and being a good friend for them. Sometimes we can get really in our heads about like, who's asking us to hang out? Who is making plans with us? Have they texted me yet? Have they asked me to do that? But think about how they're feeling from the other perspective. Have you asked them to hang out? Have you checked in on how they're doing? Have you listened to their problems? It's a two-way street, and so I think prioritizing your social life when trying to be the best version of yourself or trying to get back on track or just trying to be on your grind is so important. And again, not only working on your relationship with other people, but working on your relationship as a friend with yourself. How can you be your own best friend? And by this, I mean prioritizing your hobbies or doing things that genuinely are fun to you. Something that I read recently is like prioritizing play as an adult, which is a crazy concept, like not really, but kind of. When you think about kids, they're always playing their playing with their toys they're using their imaginations but as we grow older we're doing our jobs we're seeing our friends we're catching up but we just forget about play and then you're just thinking to yourself like how do I even play but play can be anything from doing a board game dancing maybe doing a craft like knitting or drawing or painting basically just any activity that has no other purpose other than the fact that it brings you joy think about it like that what is gonna make me have fun right now it doesn't have to be for work it doesn't have to be because you're trying to get someone to do something for you or you're trying to get something out of someone else simply how can I have fun right now and that is so important we need that natural dopamine so yeah those are all the things that I do when I'm trying to get back on my health grind when I'm trying to get back on track after a trip and just all the things I do to prioritize my well-being there's so many things that go into it and that's what I'm going to be prioritizing in this next week I hope you guys enjoyed this episode if you got some inspo from this episode or you heard something that you want to try out tomorrow or tonight or today whenever you're listening to this I hope you do so and I hope you take the time to really take care of yourself because we need it honestly the world is a tiring place sometimes and we need to take care of ourselves like we are a little baby child and I've said it before and I'll say it again nobody in this world is going to do the work for you nobody's going to pamper you like a little baby child you got to do it to yourself and if you don't other people may just pass by you they're going to say if she doesn't take care of herself why would I put in the effort to take care of her so you got to put in the effort daily on your relationship with yourself and think about who you want to be as you age do you want to age gracefully do you want to be able and move your body in all sorts of ways do you want to be mentally sharp do you want to feel healthy feel your best look your best and overall just have a healthy mental state I love you guys I hope you enjoyed this episode make sure to give it a rate and I can't wait for you guys to listen to the next one I love you guys I'm going to bed and I'll see you soon